Joe Lakewood, New Jersey, the great WABC a Democrat yesterday. Yes, Mark. I'm just one of. Yes, I'm Joe, one go one right one. ahead, my friend. Yes, I'm just one of, want to understand. What the heck of a problem do you have with Michelle Obama going around campaigning? Right, first of all, explaining? first of all, are you on a vo are you on a speakerphone? No. Because I'm having trouble hearing, honestly. I'm getting a lot of. What is my problem with what? Say it again. What is your problem with Michelle Obama going around campaigning and explaining the problems of obesity and overweight? Because we already know there's a problem of obesity and overweight, and I don't need Michelle Obama to tell us. Let me ask you a question. Michelle Obama's been out there talking about calorie counts and so forth. How many calories are you supposed to eat each day? Do you know? She doesn't take... She doesn't Answer my question. How many calories are you supposed to eat each day? Do you know? 2,000. 2,000? I don't think 2,000's right. But I will say this to you, my friend. She's been out there talking about it endlessly. What does she say? She says this is about breastfeeding and about other things. About uh, listen, I'm not. I, uh, listen, uh, uh, breastfeeding. I'm asking. <laughs> Thank you for your call. I'm, I'm with. Yes, I need the first lady to tell us about breastfeeding. Tell me, how is that done anyway? Oh, not for adults, for babies. Oh, gee. Well, has anybody asked Michelle Obama if she breastfed her children? I'm just curious. Yes, inquiring minds want to know. Great countries going to hell. Going to hell! 20% unemployment or underemployment, and the first lady's talking about breastfeeding. I guess this is, this is how Rome went down. I, I'm something like this, with dummies calling up. Hey, what's your problem with her talking about obesity? If that's all she did, I could care less. Talk about it. Have a good time. And while you're at it, make sure you tell that Stabino there, that senator from Michigan. She's looking a little zaftig, if you get my drift. Talk to her about obesity. Leave me alone. Let's move along, shall we? Another Democrat. Jeff Portland, Oregon, the great KXFD. Go right ahead, sir. Well, one reason we had 20% unemployment is the Chamber of Commerce that ships our jobs overseas. But I called because Wait, I have whoa, a whoa, 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 the Chamber of but Commerce. Hold on, lower him. Chamber of Commerce ships jobs overseas. Chamber of Commerce hires a relative handful of people. How about the Chamber of Commerce? Hey, dummy, you want to have a conversation or you want me to circumcise you? Would you let someone... All right, let him go. It's funny, that's not what he said in his comment, is it, Mr. Uh, call Screener? Nope. Nope. Mark, why are you so sure? Because they lie. Because they line them up at their phone banks and they lie. Now, the Chamber of Commerce doesn't hire a lot of people. Its members hire a lot of people. And they're shipping their jobs overseas. Let's address that as I have four billion times before. Let's say you're a big international corporation. And unlike big international unions, the antitrust laws apply to you. And unlike big international unions, you have limited free speech. And unlike big international unions, you can go to your favorite politicians, have them raise taxes, and cover all your costs and expenses. And unlike big international unions, when you're trying to create businesses or expand businesses, you have to deal with the EPA. You have to deal with the IRS. If it's a rural farm area, you've got to deal with the Agriculture Department. Depending on the location, you have to deal with the Interior Department. You've got hundreds of regulations, and then that's just at the federal level. Then you've got to deal with the states. Let's say you want to hire somebody. Oh, that's the Labor Department. And you've got to keep all kinds of records and relating to taxes and race and genitalia and on and on and on. And they wonder why jobs are leaving. They wonder why businesses are leaving. It's the Chamber of Commerce. No, it's not. It's big, fat, bloated, inefficient, overlapping government. Government. See, we're not a police state yet. We're getting there. We're not a police state yet. So if somebody starts a business, they're not required to start it here. They're not required to keep it here. They can start it anywhere they want. And once they start it, they can move it. Now, you might say that's not very patriotic. You're wrong. What's not patriotic? is the effort by our government to smother private enterprise. That's not patriotic. But Jeff in Portland didn't want to talk. And, of course, Portland, the government in Portland is just really great. Destroying private property rights, destroying free enterprise. It's a left-wing haven. The little government in Portland, the little train that could take a beautiful state, the vast majority of which is conservative, by the way, but Portland runs the place because of the population. It's like Maryland. 
the political hacks in Baltimore run the place. Oh, and Montgomery County and Prince George's, too. But you get the point. Who's shipping out jobs, ladies and gentlemen? I think it's the environmentalists, the flat-earth no-growthers. They're the ones shipping out jobs. Or maybe it's the union bosses shipping out jobs. Or maybe it's the liberals generally shipping out jobs because they hate them unless they correct them with your tax dollars. I'm more than happy to discuss why businesses leave and why jobs are going overseas to the extent that they are and why we're not creating jobs here. You want to know why? Because either you embrace capitalism or you don't. And I love the liberals' response. It's always the same. You believe in unfettered free markets? Ladies and gentlemen, we haven't had unfettered free markets since before the colonies. You call this an unfettered free market? Have you tried to buy a toilet that actually works? Have you tried to buy a 100-watt incandescent light bulb in California? Don't tell me about unfettered free markets. What we have here is unfettered government insatiable appetite. And that, Jeff, is what's shipping jobs overseas. Just thought you'd want to know. Conrad in Queens, New York, the great WABC. Go. It's really important that we invest in the right candidate in, uh, for president in two years. Uh, Huckabee makes me nervous. The prior governor of Massachusetts makes me nervous. Did you ever get a chance? I know you were trying to, to interview Chris Christie because I don't get a chance to listen to you every night. Did I ever do what? Interview, Did, Chris, interview Christie? Chris Christie? We, we put out a couple requests. They didn't respond, so I said the hell with well, he he All right, uh, let, let me let me let me finish. He obviously doesn't want to come on this program. Chris Christie, you're free to come on this program anytime you want. And I'm going to ask, let me, let me just set the rules here. I'm going to ask him the same question I would ask anybody on the national scene who wants to be president. Even though he says he doesn't, he's got a very slick PR team that's pushing him, even though he keeps saying he's not running. I would ask Huckabee, I would ask Romney, Palenque, Santorum, everybody. Where do you stand on the Second Amendment? Where do you stand on um, Ground Zero? and a mosque with a radical imam. Where do you stand on amnesty? Where do you stand on the uh, extremist environmental agenda, going green, which is killing jobs everywhere, which is going poop? Uh, I would get into all these kinds of questions that are relevant to a presidential candidate, because a presidential candidate has to be good on a lot of things. We cannot get second raters anymore. They have to be solid conservatives because you never know what a president is going to confront in the Oval Office. He cannot be a one-issue guy. It cannot be a drumbeat, 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 one, one, one. It's important, particularly in certain states. But I need somebody, as most of you do, who we know, sitting in the Oval Office with all this left-wing claptrap coming to his desk, whether it's from the bureaucracy, whether it's from Congress, whether it's from the courts, that we have confidence that person will make the right decision. This country is being destroyed on many fronts. Fiscal, absolutely. Same with culturally, on the uh, open borders. And I need to know where people stand on these issues. And you cannot say I support the Constitution and take an oath, except for the Second Amendment. So I need to know about that. If you're a greenie, I need to know about that, because we cannot create private sector jobs with this radical green agenda, which is a red agenda. So for all the candidates who are interested, I need to know these things. And you know what's going to happen, Conrad? Most of them aren't going to want to come on this program. Come on your program. I won't vote for you, for them at all. I think Chris Christie supports cap and trade. Well, it's also interesting that we, we reached out to Donald Trump a few times, and he has no interest in coming on either. All right, my friend, thank you for your call. And people read that. Oh, Mark, you're so vain, that's what... No, that's not it at all. I don't even care about these people, except that they want to be our president, or they feign that they don't want to be. But you understand the point. They're going to affect my life and your life. That's the only reason I care. And I want to ask them some questions. That's all. I'm not going to give them a softball interview. It'll be polite. It'll be professional. But it'll be a real inquiry. Where do you stand on this? What do you mean by that? How about this? How about that? I keep hearing these guys are tough. They're straight talkers. Okay, good. It's just little old Mark Levin. What's the problem? Just a little eight and a half million listeners. What's the big deal? But if they don't want to, they'll go on these other shows and give their little softball interviews. That's fine. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I know other shows, TV and radio, they bring in all these experts to talk about what's going on in the Middle East. These experts who usually are wrong. They never go back and correct 
And yet they go on endlessly. So let me give you an update in the Middle East that takes about, how much time do we have in this segment now? Take about 90 seconds. In Libya, Muslims are killing Muslims. In Egypt, Muslims are killing Muslims. In Yemen, Muslims are killing Muslims. In Bahrain, Muslims are killing Muslims. Jordan, Muslims are killing Muslims. Now you have your official expert update on what's going on in the Middle East. Oh, and in Israel, well, they're not killing each other. They're not rioting. They're not trying to overthrow the government. Now you've been updated on what's going on in the Middle East. You don't need to listen to all the experts anymore. They call this a democracy movement. Really? It's some kind of movement, but it doesn't smell like a democracy movement to me or Tom Saul or some of the others. It looks like a different kind of movement, movements we've seen before. I hope things turn out well in some of these countries, but I also know the evil that the fundamentalist Islamists are and the poison that they spew. And that element is a very powerful element in the Middle East where Muslims are killing Muslims. Well, now, this overwhelming vote in the House, including a bunch of Democrats, to uh, cut $4 billion in two weeks as part of this continuing resolution. Harry Reid ran out and said, hey, we're going to support this, too. Uh, in any event, I thought, gee, it's just, it seems weird to me. So little resistance. Then I read this statement from Michelle Bachman one of only six Republicans to vote against it. She said, I agree with the need to cut spending, but I voted against the two-week continuing resolution today because it did not include language to defund Obamacare. Over the coming years, Obamacare will hurt our economy, so defunding it must remain part of our negotiations on a continuing resolution. Nearly two weeks ago, I voted for the continuing resolution. It contained language that would begin to defund Obamacare. This legislation today did not. Steve King agrees, some of the others, the same reason, among others. I mean, I just feel like we're just aiming too low. Oops, can't say that. I mean, we're just targeting the wrong... Oh, hold on now. I just feel like we can get a lot more than we are. We have so much more leverage than I fear the Republican establishment and Republican leaders in Congress understand. The public is way ahead of this curve The public's been way ahead of this curve for over two years. You, the Tea Party activists and other conservatives out there, we know what has to be done. We have got to kill Obamacare, and we have got to slash spending. And it may be painful for some people, but for most of us it won't be. Let's be honest. We've become a government-centric society. Let me repeat that. A government-centric society where all things seem to evolve around Washington and the bureaucracies and the politicians. Why is that? The vast majority of the American people are in the private sector, working, minding their own business, and yet we have this government-centric society which runs counter to our constitutional system. And so, gee, if we dare to cut it by 10, 20, 25 percent, what's going to happen? For most of us, nothing. Nothing. We'll be right back.